welcome to the channel. Baseball is back. We got a sneak peek of what 2020 is going to look like last night. Uh, some crazy stuff with Soto getting ruled out with COVID and then Kershaw getting scratched on the uh, back issue he had there. 2020 going to 2020, so we're going to move forward and I'm excited to have baseball back. Going to be breaking down this slate today. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me over there, a new Twitter account at KJK underscore DFS. And then I'm going to be having uh, exclusive Patreon content. Uh, you can find the link in the description for that where you'll have access to my power rankings, my cheat sheet, and some live chat, Discord access to ask any questions leading up to the slate if you're interested. If not, that's fine. Uh, we're going to have free content on the channel Monday through Friday, breaking down these slates. We have an 11-game slate today with both FanDuel and DraftKings offering some pretty big prize pools. So we're going to go ahead and break these games down. Uh, behind me, you'll see my stat sheet. Uh, this is something I've been working on that I'm going to use for all my statistics during the upcoming season. Uh, all imported from fan graphs and uh, using data from the last two years. So everything you're going to see is going to be imported and included in the last two years for the innings pitched. Uh, so first we'll get into the pitchers. Before that, if you want to go ahead and like and subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated if you're new to the channel, which all of you are because this is my first video. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, looking at the spreadsheet, you can see we've got a lot of pitching options. Um, we'll go ahead and talk kind of who I'm most interested in first. Looking at the strikeout rates, you'll see Verlander tops the slate. No surprise there. Absolute stud, and he's in a good matchup against Seattle. Lots of strikeouts to be found in that matchup. Uh, there's some guys below him, similar strikeout rates, not really the greatest matchup. Uh, and something to look into with this new season startup. I mean, some of these guys are going to be limited to around 80, 90 pitches, they're not going to be fully stretched out. So salary-wise, I mean, if you're paying up for a Verlander, uh, I don't know if it's really going to be worth it. You're going to have to figure out some cheap bats. Uh, depending on the site you're playing on today, I think there are some good options, especially on FanDuel. There's some guys that stuck out. We'll get into that earlier, but the pricing, there's some low-priced guy, low priced guys that really stand out. Um, moving further down, another guy in a great matchup, Aaron Nola. Take it on Miami. Uh, decent strikeout rate. I mean, all around solid pitcher. He can get himself in trouble at times with the curveball, but against Miami, got to like him here. Moving further down, uh, Ross Stripling was announced as the starter for the Dodgers in the second game of the series against the Giants. Uh, another great matchup. The Giants are going to really struggle this year. No Posey, no Brandon Belt. Um, Another guy you can look at at a lower price range. Moving further down the list, uh, some guys that I'm going to want to target. We'll go over here to the hard contact rate. Let's sort that. You'll see a lot of red here in this row. Danny Duffy. Guy that really struggles against righties. If you move along my sheet over here, you'll see a lot of red showing up. Uh, Faith taking on a Cleveland team that's pretty solid up and down. They have some pretty good lefty mashers. Um, I mean, if you look at the lineup here, you got Fram El Reyes, Luplo down in the lower part of the order. Then obviously the obvious candidates of Jose Ramirez, Lindor, and Santana. Um, Definitely a guy I'm going to be looking to target. Uh, we'll get into the stacks a little further along. Uh, as far as any other pitchers, there's some. it's going to really depend on the site you're playing on as far as price. Once again, these guys aren't fully stretched out, so keep that in mind. I mean, they're going to be getting pulled relatively quickly compared to what we might see sixth inning or so. I mean, a guy like Verlander, who you typically see might stay out there for 110 pitches, they're probably going to be pulling around 80 to 90. So keep that in mind. Be flexible on your salary if you can get the cheaper bats in with Verlander, great. But if you're capping your upside, you may want to go with someone a little cheaper. Someone we talked about, like a Stripling or maybe even a Aaron Nola, a couple thousand cheaper. 
Um, so moving into the hitting, I had already mentioned the Cleveland bats against Duffy. Uh, another guy that really stands out as far as targeting is right here in Jeff Samarja. You see as we move across, a lot of red. Uh, if we move over to righties, doesn't get much better here. And then the lefties are what really get him. Dodgers are stacked lineup. You got guys like Muncy, Bellinger, Jock Peterson. And struggling against lefties isn't really going to do you too well against that lineup. Great guy to target. Uh, think about stacking those Dodgers. So with that being said, we're going to move on over to the position by position here. Uh, my spreadsheet's broken down in FanDuel positioning. Um, I didn't list salary because I want you to be able to use it for FanDuel and DraftKings. But if you're looking for a player and you don't see him in a position, uh, that's because it's linked to FanDuel. As we mentioned, the probable players listed, there's going to be a lot of changes early in the season here. Um, so inaccuracies will show as the season goes on. We're going to get to get more familiar with these lineups. The universal DH is another thing. Uh, creature of habit, the NL will now have a DH. Not used to that. Going to have to get those imported in here. But <clears throat> looking at the first base options here, uh, we'll go back to our pitchers and guys we kind of want to target. Another guy that really stands out as far as not wanting to play him as a pitcher but target against is right here in Sandy Alcantara of the Marlins. I mean, Marlins, not a good pitching staff. He contributes to that. You look at his numbers over the last two years against righties, subpar. Lefties is where he really struggles. So we're going to want to target these lefty hitters on the Phillies. Um, guys like Bryce Harper, Jay Bruce, DD. You could throw Hasley in there if you want. Uh, he's bottom of the order. But this Jay Bruce price on FanDuel is just too low. The guy I'm definitely going to be interested in um, to start things off for salary saving. Danny Duffy, we already discussed. Uh, as far as first base is concerned, definitely can be looking at Carlos Santana here in the four spot. And then even Roberto Perez uh, at 2 3. Typically on FanDuel, I don't really advise for playing catchers, but the guy crushes lefties. If you look at his numbers here, if we go over to the lefties and down to Roberto Perez, I mean, 349 Woba, 199 ISO, 344 Babip. Not, once again, not the numbers you're going to see from first baseman. Typically, I don't want to play catchers there, but if you want to be contrarian, he's an option you can look at. Um, moving further along. We had discussed... One thing I didn't touch on was actually this Tommy Malone matchup with the Red Sox. I mean, Tommy Malone, not a good pitcher. The Orioles bullpen, atrocious. Um, definitely could. The Red Sox lost Mookie. A uh, little bit of a different dynamic of a lineup. For those of you guys that played DFS last year, there was a constant debate on whether to play JD or Mookie. We no longer have that problem. So on the bright side, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but you got guys like Chavis, Vasquez, Bogarts, JD, all great against the lefty. Um, on the more expensive side, the Astros are an obvious candidate to stack against Marco Gonzalez. Uh, not a guy that really gives up a lot of fly balls, but in this matchup with the Astros, I don't really think that matters. A ton of guys that really crush left-handed pitching. Bregman being one that really stands out. 
scroll over to his splits against lefties here. I mean, green across the board, 320 ISO, 440 Woba, strikes out 10% of the time. And you're going to see that up and down this Astros order. If you go to shortstop, Carlos Correa, another guy right here. I mean, his overall numbers on the last two years don't really stand out too much. You go to righties, you know, not the greatest, but it's the lefties where he really stands out. Here, 373 Woba, not the most pop in the ISO category, but being in that Astros lineup, there's going to be guys on base. There's going to be opportunity to stack there and get credit for the hits, the runs, the RBIs, all that good stuff. Um, another guy we can target a little bit is actually a little bit contrarian. Um, this Nathan Eovaldi against Baltimore. Uh, if I had one regret last year in DFS, it's that I did not stack the Baltimore Orioles enough. Something about that just doesn't feel right. They're not the best team, but uh, I found myself looking at the top of the leaderboards, and a lot of times these guys are putting in elite pitchers and stacking the Orioles, and there's definitely some opportunity to be had in certain matchups. I mean, you got to take them into consideration, the individuals on the team, and they definitely have some guys that can crush here. Looking at Eovaldi's splits against righties, he's pretty solid all the way around. Move over to lefties is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting. 347 Woba, 49 slugging. Um, the Orioles line up here. When checking that out, is loaded with righties, so... That limits the appeal a little bit, but you do have a few in there. You could throw in if you're trying to get the expensive pitching on a slate like this. I think there's probably some better options. There's some there's some mispricing on FanDuel. Some guys that we discussed already. Jay Bruce, one that really stands out. Um, and another stack that might be a little bit contrarian, but when you look at the numbers, it makes sense. Is the the Padres against Bumgarner? I mean, Bumgarner has a lot of name value. Uh, it's been a, one of the best pitchers in the league for a long time, but if you look at his numbers over the last two years, he's kind of fallen off a bit, um, and especially against righties. I mean, you look at the slugging, and Bumgarner's right here with these guys, Tommy Malone, Heaney, Duffy. I mean, Bumgarner's right there as far as the worst to give up to the right-handed hitters, and San Diego is a lineup that has some guys that can really crush lefties. I mean, Fernando Tatis, the young stud for San Diego, you go over to the lefties here, and he's just got a 5'10 Woba, 306 ISO, slugging 726. It's only an 83 plate appearance sample size, but we all know what the kid's capable of, and with that hard contact, you got to have some interest in these bats. Another guy, Manny Machado. Huge splits guy. I uh, really struggled against righties recently, but lefties, the guy just crushes. I mean, you go down to his numbers here. Uh, you're looking at a 406 Woba, 292 ISO, 596 slugging. And with Bumgarner's hard contact, I mean, if they get one, get into one here, you're looking at solo shots across the board at a pretty decent, pretty decent salaries on FanDuel. Um, 3K and 3.3K is not really going to break the bank. Still going to be able to get in any pitchers you want. Then you got guys down low like Will Myers, uh, Tommy Pham, new addition, great hitter, got some speed on the bases. Um, and these late games, one one stack I haven't mentioned yet is Oakland. Uh, Oakland's lineup is just designed to smash left-handed pitching it's it's a lineup i love the target against lefties and the pricing of Fanduel always seems to be a little low uh, you look at this piscotti canna davis chapman loriano semi and they all crush left-handed pitching um we'll go back over to the sheet here and you'll see i mean chris davis a guy i love to play in dfs just a ton of power um, anytime he's in a matchup with a left-handed pitcher, I love playing the guy. 
260 ISO, 509 slugging. There's even the strikeout rate's 24% against lefties compared to 28% over here, so you dropped that a little bit. Um, and Keeney is a guy that shows a lot of strike up, strikeout upside against lefties, but righties, if you look at his splits, not exactly the highest K percentage. I mean, 27% against lefties here. If you, if you scroll over to his righty splits, 25, still decent. Um, but look at all the hard contact here. Hard contact, slugging, woba, tons of fly balls. Doesn't really get the ball on the ground a lot. Um, you got to have interest in some of these A's bat, a bats at the prices in the late game. And that's about it. Uh, stacks to have interest in Boston against Tommy Malone. If they're in a good spot. Uh, Oakland, I had mentioned. Lefty Mashers. Cleveland, I like against Duffy. Houston, you got to like. They're on the pricier side, but Marco Gonzalez, not the greatest. The one thing I will mention, he's, he does tend to keep the ball on the ground. Um, however, fly ball hitters and ground ball pitchers can be a thing. They can get those balls elevated. Houston's got a bunch of guys that crush left-handed pitching. Um, moving further down the list, Philly lefties against Alcantara. You gotta like them. And then Dodgers. Dodgers are in a great spot against Samarja. Uh, I mean, their lineup just is ridiculous now with the addition of Mookie. They can go right, left, left, right, all the whole way down the order against left-handed and right-handed pitching. I was actually watching the game last night, and they were talking about how they're going to lead Muncie off against right-handed pitching, and then anything lefty-wise, they can move Mookie up into that leadoff spot. So you're going to constantly have platoon advantages in that lineup. And then your contrarian stacks... Uh, I had mentioned stacking Baltimore. Not the greatest spot, but they're a team that seems to never get any ownership. I mean, and they're cheap. If you want to put some elite bats in there, I don't necessarily think that's the way to go on this slate. There is some pricing uh, mistakes, and as the season goes on, those price, prices are probably going to get a lot sharper. But that pretty much wraps up the video. Uh, if you like the content and you think you're going to tune into future videos, please like and subscribe. That about does it. You can follow me on Twitter, a uh, new Twitter account at KJK underscore DFS. And if you're interested in any of my exclusive content, go over and visit my Patreon page. The link in the description. Um, I'll have all sorts of stuff in there. Data sheets like you're looking at. I'm going to have power rankings, cheat sheet. Um, and then some live chat access that you can ask me any questions you want. Disclaimer on that, Patreon is a service that charges on the first of the month, so if you want to go ahead and wait till the first to save some money, that's understandable. Um, that's something that's out of my control, so I just want to give you a heads up on that. So thank you for the support. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in future videos, and good luck tonight.